All right, in 5.1, we're going to talk about random variables, and there's two kinds of random variables we need to know. Suppose you toss a coin, a fair coin, three times. The sample space for this process is <clears throat> you get three heads, two heads and a tail, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, 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 heads, tails, 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 heads, 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 tails, tails. All right, these are all the possible outcomes. There are eight equally likely outcomes. The probability is one eighth for each possible outcome. And we know that because the probability of getting a tail is one half times one half times one half. It's the same in each of these possibilities. So when you multiply them all out, you get one eighth, okay? Define the random variable x as the number of heads obtained in three tosses. The value x will remain, will vary from one set of tosses to another, but it will always be one of the numbers 0, 1, 2, or 3. That's only the possible numbers you could have for heads. So how likely is x to take on one of these values? Well, how many times did we have 0 heads, meaning all tails? One time. So that, that's where we get the 1 8. Okay, how many times is x equal to 1? That means one head. Well, this combination, this one and this one, are all possible ways you could get just one head and two tails. So if we add those up, 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8, that gives us 3 8. Okay, x equals 2, that means I get two heads out of the 3. So I list all those combinations that work, and I add them up, I get 3 8. And then lastly, x equals 3, that means I got three heads. So that only happened one outcome out of the eight, so it's one out of eight. A random variable takes a numerical values that describe the outcomes of a chance process. Okay? The probability distribution of a random variable gives its possible values and their probabilities. Okay? So it's like the probability model we talked about in the previous chapter. It tells you all the possible outcomes and the chance, the probability of each of those outcomes. There are two main types of probability distribution corresponding to two types of random variables. Discrete and continuous, right? So you'll need to know the difference. Let's we'll look at this. A discrete random variable, x, takes a fixed set of possible values with gaps between. The probability distribution of a discrete random variable, x, lists the values x1 and their probabilities p1. Now, don't let this weird you out. All this is saying is that the values that are possible out of this event are certain whole numbers, like they're counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? There's no decimals in the values right here. And then you list the probability of each of those outcomes. So in a valid probability distribution, the probabilities P must satisfy two requirements. Every probability is a number between 0 and 1, this could be a decimal fraction, okay? Inclusive, meaning it can include zero or it, and it can include one. That is possible. And number two, the sum of all the probabilities has to add up to one when you add them all up. Okay? Now, suppose we want to, want to randomly select a number between zero and one, allowing any number between zero and one as the outcome, like 0.84522 or 0.11119. The sample space of this chance process is an entire interval of values between 0 and 1 on the number line. Yet, if we define y as the outcome of a random number generator, then y is a continuous variable. Okay? So, a continuous variable can take any value in an interval on a number line. Here's the thing. A continuous variable have, has decimal values, like decimal possibilities for their outcomes. If I ask you how many pairs of shoes do you have, you don't have 0.5 pairs of shoes or 1.2 pairs of shoes. You have whole number of pairs of shoes, okay? But a continuous random variable is decimal values, it means decimal values are possible. So they, usually these are measurements, okay? Most discrete random variables result from counting something. So discrete is like counting how many pairs of shoes, how many siblings, how many cousins. Continuous random variables typically result from measuring something. So this is a key distinction for you because you're going to have to be able to determine if a variable is continuous or discrete. All right, let's try one. Faked numbers on tax returns, invoices, or expense accounts claim often 
display patterns that aren't present in legitimate records. Some patterns, like too many round numbers, are obvious and easily avoided by a clever crook. Others are more subtle. It's a striking fact that the first digits of numbers in legitimate records often follow a model known as Benford's Law. Call the first digit of a randomly chosen record X, for short. Benford's Law gives the probability model for X, note that the first digit can't be zero, show that this is a valid probability distribution. So the first digit of a certain expense either starts with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? And there's the probabilities in there. Okay? So the question says show that it's a valid probability distribution. Okay? Two things I have to show. The first is that all the probabilities are between 0 and 1. And if I look at them, they're all decimals, 0 point something, right? They all meet that criteria. So I first say that the probabilities are all between 0 and 1. That's the first thing I have to make sure of. The other thing I have to make sure of is that when I add up all the probabilities, they add up to 1. Okay? So let's do that. So if I add them up, And I add them up my calculator, and sure enough, they add up to one. Okay? So these are the two things I have to show to prove that it's a valid probability distribution. Next. From this example, describe the event x is greater than or equal to 6. And find what is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6. Okay, so first let's describe what is that talking about. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 is the event that the first digit of a randomly chosen legitimate record is greater than or equal. All right, that's what this, this is asking me. Then it says, what is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6? Well, I look at my table. I, and I start with 6. It could be equal to 6. So I need to add up these four probabilities. So I get 0 0.067 plus 0 0.058 plus 0 0.051 plus 0 0.046. And when I put those in my calculator, I get 0 0.22. And that's my answer. That's my probability. Just reading a table. Example 3. Classify as a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable. Okay, remember, discrete random, variable, random variables think counting. The way you would count, uh, continuous random variables think they're measurements. Okay? All right, so if x is equal to the pH of a water sample that has been randomly selected from a stream, the pH, you know, is level of acidity. It is a measurement of acidity, so that would make me think it's continuous, and it is. And if you're not sure, think about it. Can you have a pH of 7.25? Yes. You're not just going to have pH levels of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? B, this should be a B. This should be a C, sorry. Um, y is the number of correct number correct on a recent multiple choice test for a randomly selected state in your class. All right, so how many correct did you get on the test? Well, you get whole numbers correct, like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you don't get 2.5 correct, all right? So this would be a discrete random variable. And then C, W, the exact amount of sleep that a randomly selected student from your school got last night. Okay, exact would mean that it's probably not exactly one hour. It would be like, or seven hours, 7.235 hours, something like that. That means there could be decimals, right? It's a measurement. So this would be a continuous random variable. All right, and those are the types of problems you're going to see in your homework. I hope that makes some sense.